This screencast is called Solute Transport in Porous Media and it maps directly to the COMSOL application needed for compulsory task 6. Context is the following. Sometimes pollutants reach the groundwater, for example from above, and then it follows a groundwater flow and in many cases you're interested in how the concentration will develop in any point in space with time. The theory that I'm going to go through here is the theoretical transport model, which is a partial differential equation with respect to space and with respect to time. I'm going to go through the notation in COMSOL. I'm going to run an example with solute transport in porous media. And in COMSOL, I'm going to show how you set up the basic model structure using the model wizard, how you define the geometry, how you set all the parameters, how you do the meshing, which means that you define how COMSOL will make the calculation. You make a study, which means actually you perform the simulation, and you look at the results. The theory incorporates four different processes, all merged together in one equation. One process is advection. Advection means that a substance follows the water, and the water itself moves with convection. The second process is dispersion, which means that some water packages will move faster than other water packages. And this will cause a distribution of travel times for the pollutant in the aquifer, caused by the heterogeneity of the soil. Then there's a chemical reaction, which is described by a kinetic equation. And finally, adsorption to the soil, which means that the contaminant may spend some of its time tied to the solid phase and some time in the mobile water. The equation needed to describe all this is the following. And this is equation 9.24 in the compendium. On the left-hand side, we have the change in concentration with time at a certain point in space depends on the advective term quantified by the flow velocity, which is in meter per unit time, and the concentration gradient. The second term is a dispersion, with the dispersion coefficient E times the second derivative of the concentration with space. And finally, we have the kinetic equation R, which describes the chemical reaction. On the left-hand side, we have the retardation factor, which describes the sorption to the soil. And the three parameters are that are needed is Kd, which is the distribution coefficient, rho, which is the density of the soil, eta, which is the porosity of the soil. A value of 1 means that there's no solid. A value of 0.5 means that the volume is occupied half with water, half with solids. Absorption deals with the fact that some material will be sorbed to the solid while some will be in the solute. And often there's a direct proportionality. The more you have in the solute, the more you have on the soil. And the proportionality constant is Kd. And the unit, which is a bit hard to interpret, is cubic meter per kilogram. So we have four processes and we have the equation in the compendium. Now, how does that look in COMSOL? Well, it looks like this. It looks very, very similar, of course, but we see some differences. First, we see that KD is called KPC in COMSOL. Rho is called Rho. And the porosity, which is eta in the compendium, is epsilon in COMSOL. It's a bit more tricky with the velocity. Here we have the velocity in meter per second, but in COMSOL, the value you should enter is the volumetric flow rate. That is the Darcy velocity in cubic meter per square meter and unit time. Which means that, in fact, this term includes the porosity, but you don't really see it in the model. When it comes to the dispersion, it's E in the compendium and it's DD in COMSOL. The example I'm going to run is the following. At a certain point in time, a pollutant enters a groundwater aquifer 
in this case from left and flows to the right. And the question is, how will the concentration of the pollutant change with the time? So we have a volumetric flow of water coming in, and that has some pollutant in it, and the concentration is said to be 1. And then we're interested in what's the concentration in various places at various times. And in fact, I'm going to look at a place right here and a place right there. When it comes to the various processes, the soil density will be set to 1,700 kilograms per cubic meter, the porosity to 0.4. Kd will be 10 to the minus third. The dispersion coefficient will be 1. And we'll have a second order reaction with respect to A and with the rate equation R equals 0.1 times the concentration of A squared. So what I'm going to do now is to set up the basic model structure using the model wizard. Going to define the geometry, set all the parameters, do the meshing, so study and look at the results. Here we have a blank COMSOL window. And the first thing you do with a model wizard is to select the space dimension. And as you remember, we had something that was 10 long and 1 high, and that is two dimensions. So it's a 2D, and the model I'm going to use is found in the Chemical Species Transport module, and we find it right there, Species Transport in Porous Media. So second thing we need to do, and then we have to decide should we have stationary or should we have time dependent? And since we're interested in how the concentration varies both with space and with time, we need to have it time dependent. That's the third thing, and we're finished. First thing we're going to do is to define the geometry. So we're going to make a rectangle, which is 10 by 1. There are two ways to draw it. Either we draw it using these symbols up here, but I will actually define it with numbers. So I put the cursor here, I right-click, and I can select Rectangle. And then I will have a width of 10, a height of 1, and where should I put it? Well, start at 0 in the x dimension, which is a horizontal, but I'll put the left corner down in minus 0.5, so it's symmetrical with respect to the x-axis. And then I build this, and it shows up. Now I'm going to put out my measuring points. So I select Geometry, and right-click, select a point, and I'm going to put it over here, but I'm going to say that that is at 5, 0. Those are the coordinates. So I build that one, and it shows up, and I'll make another one. A new point, and I'm going to put that at 9, and still with y value 0. So I build that one, and I have two points, and I have the rectangle. So now I build them all together. Now it's time to define the various parameters. This is actually where you put in most of your parameters. But another thing you have to do is to define what happens at the boundaries, which are around here, that's one thing. Another thing you have to do is to say, well, what's the concentration in here when you start? But let's start with the various parameters. So I click that one, and what shows up? The fact that this is colored means that everything I specify now deals with this entire volume. The first thing that shows up is the velocity field, u. And we said that the velocity is 1 in the horizontal direction. I will not enter one for the vertical direction. Done. Then we look at the porous medium, and here are some preset values of porosity 0.3. I'll change that to 0.4. I'll change the density to 1700. Well, that's done. When it comes to sorption, there are various ways to enter that, various sorption models. I'll use something called user-defined, and that is really the simple KD model. But as you see, it's called KPC, and we had the value 0 0.001. Close that one. And when it comes to dispersion, the dispersion coefficient is 1. Those were the parameters. Now we have to define the various boundaries. 
and it assumes there is no flux at the various boundaries. Let's see here, all four boundaries are by default set to no flux. But we want to define a concentration right here to the left, and we just want the water to sort of pour out of this rectangle out to the right. What we do then is to put the cursor there, right click, and we can select concentration. And I want to select the concentration right here. Add that. Say it deals with species C, and the concentration should be 1. And then I need to say something about this boundary over here. So I put the cursor right there, species transport in porous media. I right click, and there we just want an outflow. We just want the water to come out. We don't we won't save her much more, so it's right there. That's where we have the outflow. The next thing we have to do is to define the reaction. Put the cursor here, right click, and we see that we have an option to define a reaction. We do that, we say it's right there. That's where the reaction takes place all over. And the, the reaction will be described by minus 0.1 times c squared. That's the kinetic equation. And the final thing we should do is to say, what's the initial value? Well, the initial value refers to this entire volume, and the default value is zero. Now it's time to mesh. That is, setting up console for the calculation. And I like to have a very fine mesh, so I'll use that extra fine, and I'll build it. And now it's time to study. For how long are we going to do the simulation? You can decide that here. If you click on this one, you see that we can make a simulation that starts in zero and with some time steps of 0.1 to 1. That's a default. But I will make the simulation 100 time units and the time step I'm going to use is 1. So we go to study and then we get this compute and we make the computation. And here it shows up. This refers to time 100. It's really hard to get anything out of this picture. But there's a trick. If we wanted to look at the various points instead, put the cursor on results, we right click, see we can make a 1D plot group. That 1D plot group can be further defined. If we right click on that one, we can make a so-called point graph. And that could include this point, and that one, and that point, and include that one. And if we plot it, we simply get the concentrations and how they develop. Now, if we want to make a small change to the model, for example, change KD, we can just go back to mobile fluid, immobile solid, go to absorption, go back, make it 10 times more willing to stay on the solid than in the water, Go to study, make a computation, go to the graph, and we see we get another result. In fact, the solid will move much slower through the system than before. The final trick I'm going to show you is export. Now, if you want to export your data, for example, to Excel, this is the trick. You go to the point graph for which you have the data, you right-click on it, and you can add the plot data to export. And then you just write a file name and determine where it should go. Don't forget to have XLS or something similar at the end of the file to get the numbers out. And to review this screencast. I've gone through the theory with the transport model in the compendium, the corresponding notation in COMSOL. We did an example, solute transport in porous media, which is the model that is most suitable for this purpose. And in COMSOL, I set up the basic model structure using the model wizard. I chose two-dimensional. I choose solute transport in porous media, and I choose time-dependent. Then I also built it. I set all the parameters. I did the meshing, and then made the computation by clicking Study. And then, finally, we looked at the results, including making the nice point graphs and export results to Excel. Thank you very much.